I have something for us to discuss. Men and their friendships or men and their lack of friendship. This is an essay from the Institute of Family Studies. And this one is titled, Male Friendships Are Not Doing the Job. The highlights. Society expects more from men as husbands, fathers, but men expect too little from each other. It's not difficult to see how friendships built almost entirely on shared activities and interests do not prepare men for dating. Compared to women, men often have far less experiences communicating openly about their feelings, expectations, and needs. And this is why a lot of the time when men are talking to other men online, it's basically to bloviate about women, but they actually do in fact need women to correspond just to have someone to actually have conversation with because they're not really conversing with each other. All they're doing is commiserating with each other. They need women for friendships, but they don't treat us like friends. So let's get into this article. In a video posted on social media, a distraught woman recounts receiving this message moments before her date arrived to pick her up. All right, you shallow be. Don't judge my car. Confused and alarmed, the young woman expressed her discomfort, at which point her would-be date grew defensive. He eventually texted an apology, but it was too little too late. You could chalk it up to another example of men behaving badly, except I don't think that's quite it. There are so many of these stories. As I've previously noted, these dating disasters seem to disproportionately involve men making cringy, inappropriate, or offensive comments. I don't think men are purposely trying to sabotage their romantic opportunities. Rather, compared to women, men often have far less experience communicating openly about their feelings, expectations, and needs. Many women develop these skills through their friends. Men don't, and that's a critical deficit. The late author Jeffrey Zaslow, writing in the Wall Street Journal about his own friendship experience, argued that male friendships are just different. Men spend their time doing things, not discussing them. Personal sharing and messy feelings are mostly absent. He writes, I've played poker with the same guys every Thursday night for 18 years. We rarely talk about our lives. We talk about cards, betting, bluffing. I used to say that my poker buddies don't even know my kids' names. But then I wondered if I was exaggerating. So one night, I turned to my left at the poker table and casually asked my friend Lance, Hey Lance, could you name my children? He couldn't. I think a lot of men can relate. I certainly could. I had dinner recently with a friend in his 30s who spent several hours the previous weekend playing video games with their childhood friends. His parents later asked how everyone was doing, what was happening in their lives. My friends had no idea. It didn't come up. So he couldn't say what was going on with their friends. That is crazy. That's wild. Friendships are the first relationships we've developed outside our family. They are incredibly important developmentally and offer early lessons in empathy, compassion, and reciprocity. Friendships can teach us healthy ways to manage disagreements, resolve conflict, show affection, and practice intimacy. But men and women approach friendship quite differently. Ignoring problems, minimizing feelings, taunting, and teasing are not effective ways to communicate with your partner or spouse, but is how a lot of men learn to communicate with each other. Now, you know we have been seeing a lot of these pranks, a lot of these jokes that are crude and mean-spirited, and it's because they don't really know what it's what it means to be vulnerable and express feelings and emotional intelligence because feelings and um, emotion are relegated to the realm of the woman. And so this is where patriarchy is biting them in the butt because they are not learning how to actually be friends. They are not being friends with themselves and they don't know how to be friends with women on a platonic level. So it harms them in ways that they are not able to connect. That's another reason why many of these people are lonely. So this graph is talking about women receive more emotional support than friends. The first set of um, bars received emotional support from a friend, the women, 41%, the men, 21%. Told a friend you love them. Women are about half likely to receive love from their friends in words and deeds. The men, about a quarter. 
um, shared personal feelings or problems with a friend? 30% of men answered yes. Almost half of women answered yes. It's, it is often noted that female friendships are more fraught than male friendships, but the friction in female friendships is more likely a reflection of the greater emotional investment women make in them. A 2021 survey we conducted found that women talk with their friends more often than men. They express their feelings more openly and often with their friends, share personal challenges and troubles, and seek out support and validation. We should recognize the real value that male friendships offer while acknowledging their limitations as well. Activity-based friendship endure only so long as the activity does. As priorities change and people move away, it becomes more difficult to sustain these relationships. In an interview with Quartz, New York Times columnist L. Ezra Klein explains, there's a lot more discomfort, particularly among young men, with friendships that are rooted in talking about what's going on in your life and talking about how you are feeling. But if your friendship is based on activities, on hanging out, playing video games, doing sports, or whatever manly things we're supposed to be doing, then as your life changes, as you move away, have children, or you get married, and you have a job, then how do you keep those friendships up? Because the material they were based on is no longer there. And so the friendships fall away. The solution is not to find new pastimes, but to base friendships on something more than golf, Marvel, or shared enjoyment of IPAs, creating a more male, male-oriented male spaces such as a man park. <laughs> I think that was, ba- yeah, that was based on a um, Saturday Night Live skit, is not the answer. It's not the answer either. Men need new ways of relating to each other. After all, intimacy is not a feminine quality. Exactly. Men need to learn how to relate to others on a deeper level than the surface level activity. And emotional support is a fundamental human need. And it's not being met. And that is the reason why there is a crisis of loneliness amongst them. It's not difficult to see how friendships built almost entirely on shared activities and interests. Doing things do not prepare men for dating. When you're getting to know someone for the first time, being curious, asking questions, listening, being empathetic become especially important. So many of the dating disasters you read about feature some deficiency in these critical skills. Emotional intelligence is lacking. It's not that men do not need or want to talk about their personal triumphs, commiserate about their disappointments, or share their insecurities. Rather, men more often feel they cannot rely on their male friends for it. Zaslow writes, research shows that men often open up about their emotional issues to wives, mothers, sisters, and platonic female friends, or anybody that's a female that will listen to them online. It doesn't matter if it's a female friend, a female coworker, a female, a woman in a cab. If it's a woman, he'll talk to her. (laughs) That's partly because they assume male friends will be of little help. It may also be due to fears of seeming effeminate or gay, but it's also an indication that men compartmentalize their needs. They rather turn to male friends to momentarily escape their problem and so on. It falls to women. Um, and sorry, and so it falls to women. Many heterosexual men seek out these experiences exclusively from women in their life, whether it's a partner, a platonic friend. Thus, the emotional development becomes an unwelcome burden that women are increasingly refusing to take. Yes, women are refusing to take this on. Why? Especially if there's no reciprocity in the in the um, relationship. Societal expectations for men are changing rapidly. We expect more from them as husbands, partners, and fathers than we once did. Men are meant to be attentive fathers and emotionally engaged spouses. Maybe it's time for men to expect more from their friendships as well. well. This is a good one. This certainly explains why many of them are struggling, but they need to do better. They need to want to do better. It's not up to us as women to to cajole them into doing better. They have to want to do that themselves. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share.